Right now in Mexico, there are 2 million users of e-cigarettes. So what, what can you say about a prohibition where something is forbidden and 2 million users are in this country? You know, it's, it's something very, very, uh, very naive. What you should do is regulate, guarantee safety to the users and get uh, taxes Hello world, welcome to the Vaping Unplugged podcast. Everything you need to know about vaping and tobacco harm reduction. Hello everybody, welcome to a new episode of Vaping Unplugged, the World Vapers Alliance podcast. And today we have a new guest, a very interesting guest, and we are going to talk about very interesting topics as well. And he is Juan Jose Tirion Lee. He's a Mexican lawyer, court attorney, philosophy of law associated professor at UNAM, the University of National Autonomous University of Mexico. And last but not least, he's the president of the association Mexico and the World Vaping. So welcome, Juanjo, and thank you very much for, for joining us. Thank you. Uh, it's nice to be here in this podcast. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to have a very interesting conversation. And I want to say that Juan Jose is also the author of this book that I have right here. This book is titled... In Spanish, el concepto de reducción de daños y los derechos humanos, it means the concept of tobacco harm reduction and human rights. It is a book in which he explores the, the connection or the relationship between human rights, health rights, uh, the freedom, uh, the right to the free development of, of personality case on tobacco harm reduction and vaping. And I just finished it reading it. I just finished reading it. And I totally recommend it for those who want to learn about the topic. And also I think it's great for everyone that is watching us from the advocate, advocacy associations or, or working defending tobacco harm reduction and, and vaping worldwide. But before we dive into the topics of this book, uh, Juan Jose, I want to ask you first about the situation in Mexico, what is going on? So could you please brief us about what has happened in the last, I would say the last year, year and a half, and uh, what the situation is now, what's going on? Okay, if, if you don't mind, I would like to start uh, saying that the prohibition started like eight or 10 years ago without any law making a real prohibition. You know, the Mexican system is the civil law, Mexican system, so we need to have rules to make prohibitions. Um, in Mexico, the prohibition started with the interpretation of one article of a law that is the contr uh, tobacco control law and it was not a, a express prohibition within any of the rules of that, uh, of that uh, law. It was an interpretation made by the Ministry of Health saying that one fraction of one article that didn't uh, say anything about vaping or, or any other uh, related products, uh, they, they, make, they made an interpretation saying that it says that it was forbidden. So this was the first, the first prohibition we had in Mexico that uh, I, I repeat, it was uh, from an interpretation and not from a, a law that says that it was forbidden. So when the Ministry of Health started to try to close the stores where these products were sale, um, there is a kind of trial in Mexico called Juicio de Amparo. Uh, it has a very, a very nice name. <laughs> Uh, it, it means uh, this kind of trial is uh, for the federal uh, judges, uh, court, a federal court examines if some, uh, some uh, authority doing is uh, constitutional or against the constitution. If what the authorities are doing is against the constitution, then the federal court give the plaintiff the protection of the of the justice of the union. That's what they say. The protection, a federal protection when, where the, uh, the authority cannot apply uh, one, one law or another saying that those laws are unconstitutional. Uh, it's interesting because it only protects the plaintiff. It doesn't protect the general public. So when there's a prohibition and you go to this kind of amparo trial, and you get the protection, you are the only one who can continue doing what they are saying that is prohibited, but not generally. 
not all the population can do this, uh, this prohibition. They have to start as plaintiffs, new trials against this kind of laws. So when they uh, started applying this law with this interpretation, a lot of these kind of trials, a lot of Amparo trials, uh, went against this prohibition. And a lot of them uh, gave the protection of the federal courts. So there were a lot of people with this protection so they can sell these products in Mexico. Uh, then three years ago, the president make, uh, made a, a presidential decree, which is not exactly a law, but it works as, uh, as that. The problem with a, with a decree is that it's not made by the legislators. They are not made by deputies and senators. It is made just by the president. So according to the law, this kind of decrees are an exception because all the, all the rules we have in, uh, in, uh, Mexico, in, in, in the Mexico kind of uh, legal system uh, has, to be, has to be uh, done by the uh, deputies and senators. So decrees are an exception to the rule and with that exception, our president make the first prohibition coming from a decree against the import and export of this kind of products. So that was the first prohibition. It was made three years ago. And uh, the last year in 2022, precisely the 31st of May, that you know that is the World uh, No Tobacco Day, they made yeah, another right. prohibition. He made another prohibition by another decree. Uh, in, in this case, pro, uh, forbidding the sale and circulation of the products in Mexico. So against this prohibition and against the other one, the import and export, uh, a lot of these kind of trials came in, in, the, in the way. No? So right now we have a very difficult situation in Mexico. Right now, there is a express prohibition coming from a, a presidential decree, but this prohibition has been challenged and uh, declared unconstitutional by a lot of uh, federal courts. So the companies or people who won these trials can sell the products, but the general public cannot sell the products. So we have some people selling the products in the black market. We have some people selling the products with these protections. And we have people that uh, stopped selling the products because they didn't want to go to the black market and they didn't try th these kind of trials. That's, that's the, 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 the main uh, view you can find here in Mexico right now. So, so a, a very messy situation. Um, I'm very familiarized with uh, the crease too, as you said, they are the exception to the rule, but mm -hmm. sometimes I think in Mexico and Spain too, they are becoming the rule and not the exception lately. Yeah. And um, so I wanted to ask you, what was the justification that uh, AMLO, that the president, I uh, argued to 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 do, to make this prohibition, to apply this uh, prohibition of selling vaping products? Okay, we have. Uh, the uh, Ministry of Health, one of the, uh, of the main uh, 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 authorities in the Ministry of Health is linked to uh, Bloomberg Philanthropies in many ways. Not only money, but personal relationship with, with, the, with the Bloomberg Philanthropies. Mm -hmm. So our president doesn't know anything about vaping. He just re he's just repeating what uh, this, uh, this uh, person is saying to him. So he's making up things to justify this decrease. As you said, decrees are becoming more uh, frequent in Mexico because the way this government is ruling. In a democratic state, the president is not making decrees. He, we have three, three powers of the, of the union. The executive is the president, the legislative, that are the deputies and the, and the senators, and the uh, judicial 
which is the Supreme Court and all the federal uh, courts. Uh, when you make a decree, you are overcoming all the other powers. So the only way you can fight this decree is that the judicial power that is uh, 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 a form of, with ministries of the Supreme Court and uh, courts of, uh, of circuit and judges of district say that this decree is unconstitutional. So that's what, what has been happening with, with these prohibitions. Why is he doing this? Because somebody is whispering to his ear everything that we know that all the ants say against the vaping products. So, you know, it's very ridic ridiculous what is happening in Mexico. <coughs> when you see the decree, it says, for example, that the illiquids contain heavy metals. Uh, that sounds like a phone. I, I hope I'm saying it right. Metals. <laughs> heavy yes. metals. It sounds like <laughs> kind of funny. Okay, in, in English. But when the Ministry of Health makes some analysis to the illiquids, they uh, promote to the public that they found that it contains a lot of things, but they didn't find any, any metal. So the decree is based on a thing, uh, on, on an information that these liquids contain metals, and when they do an analysis, they don't find metals. This is the, the, the stupid the stupid way the, the president is doing this these decrees. Yeah, it's definitely very a lot of contradictions. It's clearly not science based. Uh, we all know how there are a lot of interest behind the politicians pushing for this narrative and for this type of yes. regulations. And and in the case of Mexico, it's very clear. And uh, you and all the activists there have done a, a, a great work um, making these things clear, uh, who's yes. behind and, uh, and how the hand of Bloomberg is acting in the country. Um, for regular users now, for regular vapors as us, how is it? How is it like there now? Is it easy for them to obtain uh, the products? Are there enough uh, legal sellers in in the legal market, or now most of the people has recured to buying the products in the black market? Uh, you know, uh, it's kind of a tricky question because uh, the the main tobacco companies have won these kind of trials, so they are selling legally in convenience stores all around uh, the, the Mexican territory. So it's kind of easy to find these, uh, these products legally. Still, there's a lot of, uh, of products uh, sold in the black market because there is uh, one thing that I like to mention a lot <laughs> that is uh, law enforcement. The, the concept of law enforcement is not uh, uh, understand it, uh, understood the same for Latin American people. For Latin American people, the idea that the law has to be enforced is kind of a, let's see if they catch me. I'll do it anyway, but let's see if they, if they do what, uh, something against me. So that, that, uh, that is because the authorities are not enforcing the law. So what is happening? You make a prohibition in a country like Mexico, and the truth is that you can find vapors e everywhere. You, you can be in a restaurant and some uh, street seller comes with vapors selling to you. So there is not the enforcement of the law with these prohibitions. So you can find a lot of products in the black market, you know, uh, black market doesn't mean that they are bad products. These are products that we normally know, as the, the, the brands and everything, and they are good products, but sold in the black market. All the, uh, all the, all the stores that were selling, you know, in a gray market without a express prohibition were thrown to the black market. Some of them are still working. So you can find uh, the everyday vape with uh, uh, not not pirate vapes, good good vapes with uh, trademarks, 
and you can find them everywhere. Yeah, it's, uh, that's true. I, I understand your point, but I think it's still riskier, right? When these products come from the black market, there you know what the brands are. You are familiarized with the products, but there might there might be people who is not. Yes. And um, whenever these products are commercialized in the black markets, they are not going through any safety or quality controls yes. that, uh, as not as the legal products do so yes. th this you is are riskier than... you are completely yes, right but you know this question is being asked for a lot of reporters i, I do a lot of interviews uh, every week and they ask me this like, what you are saying but you know there's something that we we should know uh when when the e-liquid is made It's not a rocket science uh, talking about the ingredients of the liquid. You know that it's uh, propylene glycol. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know the, how to, to pronounce it in English. Glycerin. Glycerin. <laughs> Glycerina. Glycerin. Yeah. And uh, the, the flavors and the nicotine. And uh, for, for experience, I know that if you try to use a bad quality glycerin or a bad quality propylene glycol, then the liquid tastes terrible. You cannot vape it. And even though these products are so harmful that even buying in the black market has come that nobody has been uh, has become ill or, or die in Mexico mm -hmm. using uh, products in the black market. Yeah, I, I totally understand. And I understand that people buy the products in the black market if it is the option they have. I just mm -hmm. I just think it's clear that it's more it's riskier to buy the products in the black market. They don't go through safety and quality controls. It also mm -hmm. you can see in Mexico how people is just buying the products in the black market and they have the same access to them as they had before the selling was legal, right? Illegal. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so The government and the politicians don't they realize that first of all they are the policies that they are applying do not work because mm -hmm. they are just pushing people to the black market, be, making it riskier. Mm -hmm. Secondly, they are not leaving uh, as much tax revenue as they could because uh, any they any tax problem. revenue. <laughs> yeah. So w after one year of prohibition, are there any signs from them that they are realizing that the the prohibition is not working? Or do it? Are, are they so stubborn <laughs> that they just continue with this position? You know, I don't think that they don't realize or they are stubborn. Uh, this, that's a Mexican way. They just made the law and ah, it worked. Okay, it didn't work. Okay, so <laughs> it's the same. the The truth <laughs> is that uh, the people from the legislative power, the, the deputies and the senators, have mm -hmm. a lot of uh, a lot of. Uh, Of how do you say initiative? Initiative, law initiatives, mm -hmm. to yeah. uh, to try to regulate the products. The prohibition comes from the executive, from the president. But the truth is that the people that that, that are making laws are aware that they need to get taxes and to give some safety to the users. Right now in Mexico, there are two million users of e-cigarettes. So. What what can you say about a prohibition where something is forbidden and two million users are in this country? You know, is is something very very uh, very naive. What you should do is regulate, guarantee safety to the users, and get uh, taxes for whatever you you need to do. Yeah, absolutely. That. I guess there is also uh, discordances even within the president's political party and people that are seeing that this is not working and they want yes. to change it. Right? They just, um, and also you are having elections soon. I think you're having a presidential elections. Is it end of this year or next year? Next year. At the, at the next middle year. of the next year. Yes. Uh, are, there, are there any hopes that after, if... AMLO is defeated and you guys get a new president uh, for Mexico, this will be changed? Or what is your opinion on this? Okay, in Mexico, there is no re-election, so he is out. No, no, there's, no, <laughs> there's no question of that, about that. Uh, the well, problem he, can, is, he cannot be re-elected. No, he cannot be re-elected, re okay. thanks God. 
But the, the thing is that we don't know who will win. Uh, he is supporting one of the candidates. Uh, we think that this candidate is going to be himself, just <laughs> in another person. So if that happens, then the situation is going to be the same for, for the e-cigarettes e and all the devices. But even in his own political party, if, if another candidate wins, then something could be different. The truth is that even right now in the party of the president, there are a lot of deputies that are aware that they have to regulate these products. I, I forgot to mention something. Uh, last year, last year, no, two years, uh, two years ago, before the, the decree that uh, prohibits the sale and, uh, and the circulation in the country, the Supreme Court made a jurisprudence. Jurisprudence is uh, enforced to all of the judges. All have to, to say what the jurisprudence says. Mm -hmm. And this jurisprudence said that any total prohibition for selling these products is unconstitutional. So even with the, with the uh, ju judicial power saying that he cannot forbid the products, he made the decree. Yeah, th this is something that I think it's in your book. I, I have it yeah. noted it somewhere. Yes. Um, I, I yeah. dedicated one, one chapter <laughs> to, yes. to see the discussion in the court. I, I had marked it, a uh, 3.2 analysis of the criteria of the Supreme Court of Justice. Yeah. And it's, it's where you analyze this. And the jurisprudence, as you said, is that they cannot prohibit it. Um, and they do it basing it on the right of the free uh, development of personality, right? Uh -huh. um, then you talk uh, a bit more about this and about how tobacco harm reduction, vaping uh, has a... a a chance of being properly regulated thanks to this, or, or a chance of being protected by these rights. Yes. Uh, uh, to explain this, I have to to go a little a little uh, further back. Sure. Um, five or six years ago, there were uh, a lot of people fighting legally the prohibition uh, for cannabis use. Uh, a lot of trials were on the way. So the Supreme Court took all these trials and decided to, uh, to, to rule the trials by themselves, the, the Supreme Court, instead of the, of the low level judges. Mm -hmm. So they decided that the free development of personality is a human right so vast that you can decide whatever you want to do with your body. It, it is very important right now that we are having this discussion about the auto-perception of our gender. That, that is because of the free development of personality. Because I have the right to, to, to uh, see myself as I want is because the right I have to choose my life. So, they said that the use of cannabis, uh, recreational use of cannabis, cannot be uh, prohibited because of this right. Okay? Mm -hmm. When they were discussing the prohibition of vaping, not, not the use, but the commercialization, that's important. In the, ca in, the, in the case of cannabis, they were discussing the use. But in the case of vaping, they were discussing the sale. So when they were discussing the cell, they were talking about the free development of personality, but the jurisprudence has to go something about equity because we are discussing the selling, not the using, because the using has been never forbidden by any law, not even the, the decrease. You can use your devices everywhere. Okay, not everywhere where, where there are uh, no smoking sections, you cannot use it, but you can use it and it's not uh, any illegal, illegal act. So what the, what the court said is that if the cigarette is selling legally, 
something similar cannot be uh, forbidden just because of equality. But in the discussion, that's what I did this in, in the book, I analyzed this, it came the free development of personality because it's linked with the cells. When you want to sell something, in the contrary, when you want to use something, you cannot use it if you cannot buy it. Right. So <clears throat> forbidding the cells is making the people uh, cannot execute their, their uh, free development of personality because they, mm -hmm. they cannot do what they want because it's forbidden. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is um, contemplated already in, in some jurisdictions, right? And this is something that you talk about in the book. Uh, but there's also another point, which is um, on, on one hand, we have the rights of uh, free development of personality and we are adults mm -hmm. and we are we have the right to do whatever we want with our body and consume whatever we want. Yes. On the, on the other side, uh, for example, with, with tobacco, it's a very... Um, damaging very harmful substance and uh it can damage other people that is not a user third, uh, like third people or it can also have consequences for our health and then the social security or the national health system of everybody uh or everybody has to pay for because of our decision right so how do you think that these two should be balanced so basically the freedom a right to the free development of personality and the social goals or politicians uh, goals or, or health plans or do you know what i mean there, there's like yes. a balance that you need to find and it's difficult because it's difficult to obtain one goal without damaging those rights okay you know when we talk about the right uh, for health it's kind of a strange thing that we think that the health uh, right is kind of an obligation and it's not it's a right i don't have the obligation to be healthy i have the right to be healthy those are two different things so if i decide to eat chocolate all days and then i get diabetes and then i continue eating chocolate is my right to damage myself and what the what the government has to do is to give me uh, support, uh, health support with the hospital or doctors or medicines because I pay taxes for that. So it's the same thing here. In Mexico, there's a very big problem with tobacco, with, with the tobacco use. You pay something about 160% of taxes for a pack of cigarettes. But, so that means that first, who wants, who, who wins more money for the selling of cigarettes is the government, not the tobacco industry. So I, I'm not talking about corruption. I'm talking about facts. Yeah. So if the government takes 160 percent of the of the regular price, then they get more money than the tobacco companies. But this money should be sent directly to health services and in mexico they don't have to they so don't have to it, it is not linked it is not linked no. they, they have, you see, the, I think you have estimated in the book what is the quantity of taxes that they levy on tobacco and what is the uh, amount that they spend on uh the, the patients that suffer from tobacco related illnesses right and there's you know, a huge difference mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I've seen, I, I don't remember the amounts, but I've seen that there, there is less money uh, from taxes than the, mm -hmm. the, the money they are, they are spending for, for health services. But you know, it's something, it's something that is not precise. If you get injured in your foot and you smoke, then they say that is because you smoke. So their statistics are just saying that anything you have is because you smoke. So it's very difficult to know precisely how, how much money is needed for uh, tobacco illnesses, uh, precise illnesses and not uh, different illnesses. 
So uh, I cannot I cannot say, but the truth is that even though this money doesn't have to go to health services. They go to the normal budget for the government, so they spend it in everything except for health services. So what is the truth? If I'm a tobacco user, I pay something like a fee. If I smoke 30 years, then I, I, I already paid a lot of money for that special taxes. And when I go to the, to the health services uh, that come from the state, they don't have anything to, to, to help me. So that, uh, that reason that the government is saying that they spend a lot of money is a complete uh, lie. They don't have even money to spend for, all, for different people because they are uh, taking the money that should go to health services to another place. So, you know, that, that happens in all third world countries. It's very yeah, normal. <laughs> obviously, I, I think we have to change the focus that we have on this. And because how I see this kind of taxes is as a sort of public insurance, right? Yes. So you are, you are consuming a, a substance that is harmful and you are paying a fee, a tax constantly. And this should be to insure, insure yourself in yes. case that you, have, you get some illness after this. But not only in Mexico, but in any country, yeah. there is yes. a relationship. It just goes to the common box and mm -hmm. then it gets spent however. You don't know what the relationship mm -hmm. is. And also, um, it, it's like if you are paying a car insurance, you pay every month your car insurance, but then when you have an accident, where's the money, right? <laughs> yeah. They don't have it for it when you need it. So, But anyway, in the, in the case, this happens, for example, in the case of alcohol, in the case of tobacco, but in the case of um, vaping, which is a very little, very reduced harm uh, substance, even if it was very highly or very low taxed, taxed um, these taxes wouldn't need to cover any any type of illness or any type of damage that people who vape or who use these products will have. So yes. um, why are they not applying the concept of harm reduction here? You mentioned in the book how the concept of harm reduction has been applied in, for example, vehicles, right? With the uh, mm -hmm. safety safety belts Belt. or or helmets, helmets. Uh, on a motorcycle, or in a HIV or or the AIDS case when mm -hmm. when the government has these sort of uh, projects in which they give sterilized uh, syringes for for mm -hmm. drug users. So why is it taking so long for some countries, such as Latin American countries, to apply and recognize this tobacco harm reduction concept for vaping, for, for smokers? You know, it's an ideological issue. Uh, even in almost all the world, not all the world, but almost all the world, we are sure that these products are less harmful than smoking. In Mexico, we still, the government is still saying that they are a lot more harm, harmful than the uh, normal cigarettes. And you know, that's against science. That's again what, what we have. Lately, uh, something called Instituto Nacional de Salud Pública, that is a, a public health institute, mm -hmm. uh, they made some, uh, some tests to some illiquids sold in Mexico. Uh, manufactured by Mexican people with, uh, you know, the, the ingredients are not Mexican, I, I know <laughs> they, they come from the United States, but they make some uh, tests to check if they had, for example, uh, vitamin, uh, vitamin, what is it? Vitamin E, acetate? Yes, yes. Because they were saying that the liquids have this, this uh, acetate and they didn't find any in any of the, the 200 and something liquids they, they studied, they didn't find acetate. So they published these, uh, these uh, results in a, in a video in their Facebook page. And after they finished, they took it down. <laughs> you know, they didn't find metals. They didn't find uh, acetate. They didn't find uh, all the things they say. They, they found, for example, uh, ¿Cómo se llaman estas cosas? Tromicinas? Una cosa así. Oh, I don't know. The they found something that they said that, uh, that the 
the illiquids had before, but when they when they wanted to say the amount of these of these things, they saw that they are very very low compared to the standards of of the industry. So they are starting to speculate. Well, they are nitrosamines. That's the name. Mm -hmm. These nitrosamines are present in the e-liquids, but they are in a very small amount, a lot below the, the standard of the industry for these kind of, uh, of substances. And then they speculate, oh, but we don't know if even in these small amounts, they can cause cancer. So these, <laughs> these results were so stupid against what they are saying they were very good for what we are saying so they took the video out so that's the way they are working just by ideology so if you try <coughs> to <coughs> to uh, prohibit something the best way to do it is first making propaganda to the whole public that this is the worst thing uh, that can, that can consume a human being. And then when you try to make the prohibition, the public says, oh, that's good because it's a bad thing. So that's a problem we have the activists in Mexico. We have to start by convincing the public that according to the results of scientific studies, these products are a lot less harmful than the, than the other products, than the normal products. So, we are in this way. When the legislators are aware of the studies, comparing the studies like the one that says that uh, it causes uh, uh, cardial, car cardiac arrest. You remember that one? Yes. Uh, that the, the guys who had the cardiac arrest had it before they start, uh, they start vaping. So when they, when they, when they yeah. see these, these different studies, they are aware that the truth is that this product is a lot, a lot less harmful than the, than the cigarette products. And then that's what they start trying to make regulations to have this legally in the market. Yeah, I completely agree with you. It seems like here they, they sort of fail with that strategy, right? Because first they apply the regulation. I mean, the, there has been a lot of misinformation before the ban in the media and by politicians in Mexico, but as you are saying, uh, when they did these studies, it didn't show the results that they wanted. That they wanted. <laughs> yeah. So it is the generally in Mexico, the public, the general public and the media, are they aware of this? Uh, is the public opinion on vaping changing to a more favor favorable view or is it yeah. still very negative? I think I think that uh, the people is not stupid. So it's very easy to find. In, in the web, the, the truth, the, tr the scientific tests, the position in first world countries where almost in all the first world countries, uh, vaping is, uh, is legal. So, and you know, the, the, the way the politics are being conducted in Mexico right now, all the people is always trying to check <laughs> for a second opinion at least. Because, uh -huh. you know, we have a very liar president. So everybody knows that he's lying all the time. So when they when he says something about vaping, everybody thinks he's lying. So that's that's a good thing. And the media and the, the uh, little uh, intervention that the, the advocates in Mexico have, uh, have been making that the people at least try to check for themselves who's saying the truth. Just one last question. How is it with doctors in Mexico? Because there are several studies that point out how in countries such as the United States, France, Germany, uh, many doctors, many physicians think that, that nicotine causes cancer and that vaping is worse than smoking. Is it the yeah. case in Mexico or, or is it different there? No, no. It's, it's something similar. When you're a doctor and you see that the... Uh, and, uh, OMS, the, uh, the WHO, the WHO is saying that because the WHO says that nicotine doesn't cause cancer, 
But when you're a doctor and you see that the WHO says that nicotine doesn't cause cancer, but in the vertical way, they work uh, with 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 uh, with doctors in 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 the public health system. Mm -hmm. If the chief says that it causes cancer, it causes cancer. You know that it doesn't, but you're not going to be fighting with your boss about an opinion. Okay, so. They are aware, but still, they don't want to say what they know. So it happens in all the world. In Mexico, it's similar. Some doctors have been getting out of the dark <laughs> publicly, saying, no, these products are, are better. These products, And they are getting chased like witches in, uh, by the, uh, by the, how uh, uh, do <laughs> Uh, I, I the witches were chased by the Inquisition. Like the Inquisition, <laughs> yes. There's a, a witch hunt. There's, there's a witch hunt witch for hunt the doctors. doctors who are saying different things from the standard of the vertical hierarchies in Mexico. Well, um, I don't have much to ask you, Juanjo. I think uh, this has been great. I don't know if, if there is anything else that you want to add. Uh, I completely agree with your views. And I hope that you guys get rid of uh, AMLO very soon and that you <laughs> have a, you have a proper regulation of, of mm -hmm. tobacco harm reduction products soon. So if you want to add a punchline or say anything else, it's the moment now. Thank you. The punchline is, sorry about my English. But, you know, it's kind of difficult that, uh, that a hispanoparlante who doesn't speak English uh, very frequently uh, can articulate uh, the, the sentences correctly. So I'm sorry <laughs> about that. No, don't worry. It, it is the same for me. So it's a little bit weird also when there's a Spanish and a Mexican and we have to, to talk mm -hmm. in English. But, but thank you so much for this. And I think it's thank you. better to do it in English because so the book is, is available in Spanish. And uh, I recommend everyone who wants to, to learn more about tobacco harm reduction and human rights to check it. We will uh, leave a link in the description for everyone who wants to, to access it. Um, but I think since it hasn't been translated to English yet, it hopefully nope. will be. Yes, we're trying to, uh, we, we have a proposition to translate in Portuguese by some Brazilian uh, activists. And uh, this book were made with the support of a KAC scholarship. So the people from KAC is uh, very, very interested in translating in English. Still, I'm trying to do it here in Mexico, but we will see. I think uh, for next year, it is going to be in English. Great. So hopefully it will be, and uh, we will make sure to share it with our followers. And I also want to recommend everyone to all of our viewers to follow Juanjo's work because it's, it's really great and they will be able to get the book once he publishes in English. So thank you so thank much, you. Juanjo, for being here. Thank you here. very much, Alberto. Yeah, thank you. It was a pleasure and thank you everyone. Bye-bye and see you in the next episode. Thank you.